This is a second video about the uses of convex floating bodies, but if you don't know what those are, you might want to watch the first video first. A link to that is on the screen and in the video description. We want to use it as a tool to uh, study the boundary structure of convex sets. Why are we interested in, in convex, convex compact sets anyhow? Well, those appear naturally almost everywhere in nature, like for instance crystals are convex, or shape of organs is often convex. So those are naturally appearing shapes and therefore we want to say something about uh, uh, their boundary structure or their structure in general. Now the floating bodies help us to say something about the boundary structure via a quantity which is called affine surface area which measures how the boundary behaves. Now how do we get this affine surface area? We get that by looking at a volume difference or in to stay in the plane at an area difference so we would look at the area of the convex compact set K minus the area of the floating body K delta so what we look at is the area defect here. So if this is our K and here is our K delta. Now I have drawn it as they, if they look uh, alike, which they don't, as we know. So this area defect is just that part here, right? This area, because we all take, so this is K delta, area of the big one minus area of the small one. So what remaining is this one. I call this the crust. We take the crust. Good, I like that. And now we see if this K delta is not convex, what is the area supposed to be? What are we going to take as the area? That's going to be a problem. That's why we don't like it when it's not convex. You could, there was a crust on our... On there our was planet, a crust. But it was just very complicated. It crust. was a complicated crust and it was not clear should we take those little sticking out parts as well in our area defect or not. So it made things a little bit ambiguous. And already, okay, so this is still an easy example, but uh, one can easily imagine that it looks even more complicated when we uh, deal with uh, not just such easy shapes as triangles, and then we will be hard pressed to make a, a sensible uh, a prediction of how such a difference might look like, especially if we are in high dimensions and not just the plane. Professor, what information can you get from finding the set's crust that you couldn't have got from the set itself. It just seems to me like you're losing information about the original set. Well, what it gives to us, so what we'll do is we look at this area difference and then we'll want to know how it behaves in this quantity delta. So basically we are almost taking, if you wish, we are almost taking these uh, floating bodies and so what we now do is, is we'll let delta go to zero, that is we are kind of taking, mm, how could, could I say you're, that? You're making the crust thinner or thicker? I'm making the crust thinner and thinner, that is I'm moving, the delta becomes smaller so the crust is made thinner and thinner, that is we are moving with our floating set towards the boundary, so to speak we are like mm, taking a microscope. Our microscope is the floating body that moves towards the boundary and is exploring how the boundary behaves of the body and what it turns out that, okay, if you are in dimension two, then it's just delta to the two over three. And then amazingly, there is a quantity that comes in which is an integral over the boundary. So that's describing by dk, I describe the boundary of the body and, and then comes an expression we are in two dimensions, one over three, d um, u. So what this thing here is, it's the curvature of a boundary point raised to this power one over three that comes in as we approach with our floating body the boundary. So to speak, what the floating body tells us as we approach the boundary, it tells us, oh, how curved is uh, the uh, convex body we started out with. That's what it lets us do. If I give you a floating body, mm -hmm. and presumably the delta that was used, 
Is Very there good. always a unique set attached to it? Can you reverse engineer what the original shape was? Yeah, excellent question. We do not know. So this is open. So there are many open questions for these floating bodies, and that is one that is open. Excellent question. So like a floating body is not like a unique fingerprint? We don't know. It might be, it might not be. It's still open. We do not know. So another open question is like, okay, here is your body K. And you'll construct, you have constructed the floating body for uh, one delta. So uh, there, there is one delta so that uh, the following happens. Actually, the body and the floating body are homothetic. So that is k delta is a multiple that depends. So this is the multiple uh, that depends on delta, of course, of k. Then does that imply, and that is open in general, must k be an ellipsoid? That is. So this we don't know. We only know it if delta is small enough, then we know it. But for arbitrary delta, we do not know. So that's also open. You said that delta has to be small, and I can see why it has to be small. What happens if you start using big deltas? I imagine you get so, some crazy effects. Exactly. So if delta is small, then uh, so delta small, then it, this is OK. But if delta is large or larger, then delta larger, whatever it means, then this is open. So if we have this homotety for one delta, so that is open. If delta is small, then it's OK. But then notice already that, OK, if we have a convex body here and we'll construct the floating body, that is, we chop off you know, these sets of area or volume or whatever delta, then we see already that we cannot be with our delta too large. So say here is the center uh, of gravity of the body and say it's at zero, it doesn't really matter. Like if we chopped off, you know, delta that is more than say one half of the body and we did that everywhere, then we would just get the empty set. So naturally we have a restriction for these floating bodies. They only exist if delta is sufficiently small because otherwise, you know, we would chop off too much and there would be nothing left. You're using floating bodies and convex floating bodies to tell you things about the original set, the mm -hmm. original shape. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I can't quite figure out what you're trying to figure out about the original set that you couldn't look at, that, that you couldn't figure out by just looking at it originally. Like, I can't see what new light you're shining on it by making these floating bodies that change in shape, like what you're trying to learn about the shape. Um, what we learn about the shape is C. If I have uh, uh, the boundary of the body that's very flat, say it's even a polytop, say it's like so, then if we cut off, then uh, if we cut off uh, uh, our delta business, right, then uh, we don't move down, say we have a long flat piece here, then uh, if we cut off our delta, then uh, with this line L, then we do not move down so much here, whereas if we have a round piece, and we cut off our delta with the line L, then we have to move down much further to cut off the same amount of area. So in that sense, the floating body tells us, OK, you have rather a flat part on, your, on the boundary of your body or rather a curved part on the boundary of your body. So that's what its uh, essential uh, 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 benefit of, of doing this floating body business. So it's, it tells you how, how curved and flat and pointy and spiky your body is. It's a way of classifying it. Exactly. It's a way of telling... Because uh, I feel like well, I could just look at it and tell you that, but you want to put it into a mathematical language. We want to put it in a mathematical language and also... Uh, if you look at these objects in uh, uh, two dimensions, everything is pretty uh, straightforward and easy, but think of them being in very high dimensions, uh, n being uh, anything, the dimension being anything, then it gets a bit more complicated to actually you know, decide on how the boundary structure is like. To illustrate this point even further, when you are more curved, you have to kind of cut more down. Like imagine you have a corner, right? Then you have to even cut 
down more, and if you have a very narrow corner, then you have to even cut down more to cut off the same uh, area delta. So that tells you how far you cut in, um, tells you, okay, if you have to cut in very far, maybe, uh, you know, the boundary of the body there is very curved or even spiked like so. I'll set to multiply. So I'll multiply this big number instead of by one, I'll multiply it by seven. <laughs> 